So interesting topic, John. Today we're going to be talking about stop the MTHFR madness. And I just kind of came up with that topic because I remember the book called Stop Your Stop the Thyroid Madness. And it really brought about a, a paradigm shift for a lot of people who were looking at just TSH and T4 and playing whack-a-mole with 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 helping their thyroid problem and not looking beneath the surface with other values or indicators that can give you good reflections of your thyroid health be besides just T S H and T4. And I think it's the same thing with, you know, looking at genetic components and looking at the idea of, okay, I got an MTHFR problem and then going crazy trying to figure it out when there's so many things beneath the, uh, beneath the surface. So maybe you could kind of just give us your thought on, we've talked about this plenty of times in terms of how to look beneath the surface and stop the MTHFR madness with just, you know, reductionistically thinking that you have it or you don't have it or take methylfolate or don't take methylfolate. Give us a little insights onto that with what you've dealt with, with all the years of working with MTHFR based patients. Yeah. So the, the biggest thing is, is when, when you're talking about genetic um, and, and looking at genetics to kind of get insight into how someone's biochemistry works to give insight into whatever chronic health issue that they're struggling with, um, you know, and it's kind of become one of my biggest pet peeves is, you know, just looking at MTHFR. And you'll see a lot of doctors out there that through recent, you know, through blood work aspects and things will check MTHFR, um, and, and then people will, you know, get the, the assumption that that is like the answer to all their problems. And, and it really isn't. And, and, you know, when you're talking about genetics, MTHFR is one gene and, and it's an important gene. And, and we're not here to kind of discredit the impact of that because it is important um, and why it is so important. And I always tell patients this, it's, it's kind of like the mat, it's the last gene it's the last main gene that feeds into your methylation or methionine pathway so it's kind of like the last important gene that starts the party for a lot of things that happen in your body and in terms of how your body can make neurochemicals how your body can make antioxidants like glutathione how your body can heal making dna dna and rna um you know so there's a lot of benefits of of mthfr so it's not like okay just we can't discredit mthfr all in itself but realize that's just one gene in a sea of hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of genes that get you from point A to point Z. And that's where the problem lies. If you're just looking at from point A to point B and trying to make your, you know, your assumptions or trying to have a, uh, a life changing effect by just looking at that piece of the puzzle, you're really missing the boat. And I know I've used this many times, Joel, and I know you've heard me repeat it a couple of times, the Harry Potter analogy and it really holds true with this. And if you're just looking at MTHFR, it's like you're reading the first page of the first book of the Harry Potter series and you close the book up and you're like, I know how this story is going to end um, without reading the rest of it. You just, you just don't. And, and so it is a complete injustice by trying to play at this genetic level as a practitioner or as somebody out there listening to this, is figuring out, okay, yes, I, I know there's a genetic connection to why I can't recover. And it, it's not just MTHFR, you know, but MTHFR a lot of times a player. And, and a lot of times the, the issue with kind of using the word genetics is when people hear genetics, they think of like only family history and realizing we're talking about genetic aspects like MTHFR, we're getting an insight on how your biochemistry works. And if we want to know how your biochemistry works, we just don't want to know one little piece of it and then just basically assume or neglect the rest of it and just hope that one piece takes care of everything else because it really never works that way. And so when we started, you know, doing things for MTHFR, like take, you know, giving patients methylfolate or patients are prescribed, you know, high dose uh, prescription methylfolate like Deplin from their medical doctors and MTHFR defect, a lot of people learn really, really quickly that there's more to the story just because they either do really well out of the gate and they fall apart or they actually feel 10 times worse because, worse because there's more to the story than just MTHFR. So I like what you did with the title of the Stop the MTHFR Madness because it really is. Because it really is an injustice if you were trying to learn about genetics and methylation and how all this stuff works and all you know is you have an MTHFR defect and you know nothing else, 
you're doing a complete injustice in trying to get answers. Yeah, you may get lucky. I mean, we've had the patients that we don't see very much anymore because I think our our antenna has gone so high it attracts in a lot of the really difficult cases. But starting out, you would have a really good slam dunk with bringing that component into it. And they weren't a complex case and they did very well with it. But the way we look at it now, John, is to help stop that MTHFR madness is the idea of this priority system or the pyramid. And, and what we've done is we've categorized into different uh, genetic types, um, different areas that people can focus in on. And when I review a genetic uh, pyramid, John, I talk about the upper parts of the pyramid, the methylation components of the pyramid that, like you said, are the last steps in in the the priority system of getting things done i kind of call that people and people have a good way of understanding this is that's what your income is right that's what will give you the the sort of the spending money if you will for for luxuries in your body um but the priority system at the bottom of the pyramid are your expenses and like any business um, if you can control your expenses first you'll have that much more spending money without going out and getting new clients, right? And getting new customers. So maybe you could speak a little bit about that where um, the bottom part of this pyramid is the is your major expenses that if you have huge priorities that aren't being handled, it doesn't matter how much up top you give yourself spending money. And in fact, if you give yourself too much spending money and you don't have clear pathways to be able to utilize that and convert that into you know spendable money you're only going to compound the problem by not addressing your expenses and not spending your money wisely um, so kind of relate that back to how we um, talk about the priorities and and how we categorize this into seven different genetic prior priorities yeah so we're talking about kind of like a hierarchy of, of genetic priorities looking at this and so when you know the full genetic story um you know and you, and you, you have more information there's mthfr uh, you know we always talk about kind of mthfr methylation is kind of the top of that pyramid or or you know and, or it's kind of like one of those last priority aspects because there's these we call deal breakers or the foundational things and if you've got genetic factors or you've got issues going on with those foundational issues, um, or what we call the deal breakers, you can do all you want for methylation. You just take all the methyl B vitamins you want in the world. It just things aren't going to be sustainable. You're not going to get the impact that you're looking at because, like I said, your 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 expenses far outweigh your income coming in, um, just because you don't have control over that. And the thing is, is a lot of those deal breakers and foundational things. Um, they go back to inflammation at some level. And so I got a lot of patients that come in and, and you know, they come in because they, they, you know, they were told they had MTH of our defect. They want to address the genetics. And it's like, they say, oh, I've got inflammation problems. Well, you know, oh, everything goes back to inflammation at some level. What does that mean? Well, there's a lot of genetic stories that really deal with specific types of inflammation that happen in the body. And so when somebody has methylation impairment further downstream, they're going to have issues with inflammation control. And if they got genetic stories going on down there, further down the pyramid where there's like that foundational aspect, it's like there is no chance for recovery. Okay. So it's almost, you got to kind of work this kind of bottom up approach. And at the top of it is MTHFR methylation. But if you have genetic factors down here at the bottom of that foundation that are not being addressed, it's going to be an uphill battle. And those things deal with, you know, like the ability to control histamine and mast cells the ability to control iron and copper, the, the body's ability to, um, you know, uh, uh, regulate nitric oxide systems, you know, the body's ability to, um, you know, take food from the food we eat and burn it as an energy source. You know, if you can't do some of those foundational things, then everything further up is going to have some impact or inability to be as effective as it can when you start doing things like put supplemental approaches in the mix to address an MTHFR, some of those other kind of big buzzworthy genes that are out there um, that people are taking this or that for and just not seeing the response. If they, if they kind of go further down the hierarchy and say, all right, there's some foundational things that got to be addressed in conjunction with that, then everything else they're doing can really take off and be that much more sustainable and effective. 
Yeah, exactly. So, so to summarize, we're saying that MTHFR is important, but if you focus on that solely and expect that to pay all your bills by taking a methylated version of a B vitamin, you're going to be solely mis you know, mistaken and you may feel worse more than likely than feel better, or you may not just be moving the needle and you may be plateauing. So what we've done, John, explain to us sort of our way of of now organizing that. So being able to identify um, that there's these genetic types um, and then being able to identify which genetic type you fit into and then what do they do from there based on, okay, I, I'm buying what you're telling me. I get that there's these priorities. I don't know what they are yet, but I realize that there's something there. Plus, um, I, I'm, I realize that based on my specific gene tips, not just the MTHR, most of the time, if I don't even have it, now what do I do? So tell, let's give them a little teaser as to what we've put together for them. So, you know, just with doing what we do every single day, looking at genetic reports, working with people with chronic health issues, um, you know, and what we did here recently in the spring with our MTH of our crash course, um, we kind of realized that people kind of cluster into different groups, you know, based on what their genetic reports look like and, and compared to health concerns they have. And so with that, you know, we take the priorities of some of those foundational things and kind of work up all the way up to like MTHFR methylation activity and realize that, wow, people that have like XYZ symptom, they all kind of have maybe a little bit of similar genetic presentation. And from that, we've been able to kind of classify like seven core genetic types with that, you know, for instance, like somebody that, let's say somebody's somebody's symptoms are they're fatigued or depressed and they have MTHFR and they take methylfolate and their life changes around. And that's like the only genetic component because that still does happen. You know, I'm not going to discredit that. There are st still people where the only answer is MTHFR. Somebody like that's going to fall into what we call an understimulated genetic type. They don't have some of these other genetic types there. Basically, they just, they're an understimulated genetic type and they need more gas in the tank, like taking methylfolate because of a weakened MTHFR um, you know, ability to make enough bioavailable folate. So the, the, the evolution of this year genetic type came from looking at people with chronic health issues. It just, the needle's not budging and realizing that all, most of these people have very, very similar presentations in terms of how their biochemistry work. And, and we compare that to laboratory components, you kind of see these patterns. And so what we've done is kind of evolved this to where people through understanding certain genetic factors or understanding some of their health concerns can actually save a lot of time and a lot of money to be able to say, Hey, I fall into this genetic type. Let me put my focus there for a while. Okay. To address that through dietary lifestyle changes, supplemental things, maybe some labs that they got to investigate a little further. That's really going to kind of give them the answer to really kind of hone in and allow them to kind of get tunnel vision or down that with a proper rabbit hole to really get the needle budget. And so when you're and really the good thing about this genetic stuff and sometimes a bad thing is the complexity to it. You know, the good thing is there's, it's so complex and we're still learning more. There's more answers that we don't even know yet. But the bad thing is it's so complex. And one of the biggest things we hear from people, you know, patients, doctors, we train everything else is it is complex and there is a huge learning curve with this. So what we've done is saying, how can we really simplify this down and, and really from that, we've kind of determined that, wow, we can simplify this down by being able people to determine what genetic type they are and go from there. And, and what's really cool is I read an article this morning on the Wall Street Journal that there was a whole thing about if you got health concerns, you could be a testosterone type, you could be a serotonin type, you could be a dopamine type. And I'm reading that article and all those types, dopamine, serotonin, estrogen, testosterone, it goes, it goes right back to the genetic types. You've got all these people that are going to be clustered into these hormonal neurotransmitter types and have some areas where they get stuck because that's very similar to this whole genetic typing thought process. And really what it's designed to do is really streamline and simplify this process and give people really, really solid starting points on where they have to put their focus and energy to get the needle going in the right direction for them. Yeah, and it's, it, I, I really think it's, it's ingenious too, John, the way that it's been put together from the standpoint that um, here's your genetic susceptibilities um, based on your genetic test, um, and then giving them an outline of which genes fit under which specific 
type so that person can actually check those off. And then where the perfect storm um, uh, epigenetic environmental overlying factors um, happen to be, um, you know, uh, creating the perfect storm with those gene SNPs are where the testing comes in, right? So if you have a person who may fall under an understimulator type, these are the gene SNPs that you would need to look for, check those off, and then these are the tests that you would want to do to confirm whether or not that is a, a real problem or not. And then most importantly, here's the best nutrients to go forward with that um, so that that's what you and I do in everyday practice where when someone starts off with critical case review and they have you review their genetics, basically you're saying here's your marching orders based on what we found with your gene SNP, here's the top three or four priorities that we want you to go in towards. And if you're so inclined to look further, deeper, um, you know, longer into creating a, a, a verb of, you know, healing over the long haul, here's what other protocols you're going to need to do down the line. Maybe speak a little bit about that and how you develop that as well, because I think that's awesome. Yeah, so it, and it really what it comes down to is like once somebody can determine the rabbit hole, they got to go down, right? And, and so initially, it's saying, okay, what genetic type or types is someone? And usually, everybody's going to fall into one or two of these genetic types pretty strongly based on symptoms or experience and things of that nature. Um, so once they determine, hey, oh wow, I, I am this type of genetic type. Now what do they do with it? And so then what we do is we, you know, hey, we streamline it. Where now they they understand which rabbit hole they got to go down. Now, based on that, what do you do? And so from there, we've simplified it for each genetic type. There's anywhere from like four to 10 core genes that you got to look at. So if you solidified it down to like, you're an understimulated type, you know, these are the eight genes that you need to focus on. Like, these are the things you got to figure out how they're players. And if they are, these are the things you can do for it. These are the supplement or nutrients that you can take to uh, enhance the weakened response in in your genetic expression with that and then from there these are some of the tests that if somebody in my office has those genetic priorities these are some of the tests that i'm probably going to recommend that they investigate to look at to determine clinical relevance to say all right if you start out supplementing with some things to address here and these tests come back screaming significant that they're they're players we may have to put the gas pedal down and pulse those nutrients a little bit more aggressive. And so what it really does is it just, it simplifies each step of the way. Number one, determine which travel you got to go down. And then from there, these are the core genes to look at. These are the nutrients to consider. This is the dietary lifestyle that you should consider following. And then here are labs that test the clinical relevance of those genes to tell you, do you have to get a little more aggressive or is this a... Uh, uh, maybe not a big of a piece and you can scale things back, but what it does, it really kind of determines if you're on the right track, which more often than not you are. And that's something that's just really going to kind of tell you and confirm that, Hey, this has got to be my kind of lifestyle change going forward. All right. Based on the genetic type that you fall into and that you've discovered. Yeah. And, and a couple of tools that we'll have without having to purchase the course is a mini course that we've put together where you can just give us your email, log into that, and we'll guide you through the seven genetic types so that that at least like turns on the light bulb of, okay, yeah, I identify with that one or identify with this one. Um, and then that's where you can start the process of investigating what do you do with that specific genetic type or types. And you'll notice, John, you know, we're really not, I mean, we are talking about MTHFR in that it is the, the, the last step in the, in the game, so to speak. Um, but you really got to pay those genetic priority bills first. And depending on what your genetic type is, will be the bills that you need to focus in on first, right? Would you agree? Absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And, and like I said, this whole, this whole concept of your genetic type, it's really designed for, uh, you know, anyone and everyone just to really streamline this process down because, you know, like the reports I go over with patients, you have thousands, thousands of genes in them, you know, and I always tell patients, I'm like, it'd take me days to go through all those pages and all those genes with you. I'm stripping this down to a starting point. And what that starting point is with my patients, it really falls into the genetic type that they are. And these are the priorities that we're going to start supporting. We're going to investigate further because 
based on their health history, based on their genetic predisposition, that's the rabbit hole that it's taken us down. And so what we're doing is we're kind of putting this together and kind of putting those, that algorithm, those steps in place that we do every single day with patients to allow people to get a little bit more information and get a little bit more control over these things and, and be able to make some impacts and get the needle moving. Because with a lot of people, that needle's stuck. And if they can do something to get that needle moving, a lot of times from there, it's a snowball effect. And, you know, and I think it's the way healthcare is going too, John. I mean, you, you were one of the very first persons to, that said to me, like, hey, like, if you're going to play at this level, you got to know your stuff, right? And because the people that come to us are very well researched. Um, and, and unfortunately, I mean, they've had to be because it's their kid or it's their loved one or it's themselves that is not able to, you know, take part in life, is not able to earn an income is sitting on the sidelines while it passes them by and they go see their family doctor and they have no idea what you know what mthfr is or they just tell them to be on worst case scenario folic acid right so right. Um, these these people um they're sophisticated and they want to understand okay besides mthfr what do I got to do about it? Like what tests would be helpful for me? I, I don't, I don't have the thousands of dollars to spend on a doctor. Um, and, and, you know, I've already spent tens of thousands of dollars and I've already been not working for so long. Um, and this is really nice because this gives you the guide. This gives you Dr. Thomas and myself um, experience in, in this. Um, and this gives you the insights as to, okay, here's how you categorize it. Here's the gene SNPs that you want to look into. Most of you already have a genetic test already, which you can use. And if you don't, then we have tools on where you can get those from. And then we can tell you if you want to look further into this, here's the, you know, you can be cost efficient and cost effective and do this test and that test at your leisure and layer on the next level of your, of your lifestyle, nutritional, supplemental, um, recommendations so it creates a uh, an ever escalating improvement and not plateauing right I, right I absolutely say. and that's what it's all about is like I said get the needle moving and, and get things going the right direction um, and, and you know the, the genetic type concept that we put together is really intended to streamline that you know and we're excited this is gonna help a lot of people and um, and uh, you know be able to get people to start asking the right questions, get things turned in the right direction for them. Um, and because more often than not, there's genetic answers, you know, into why their biochemistry is not able to cope with the environment that they're in um, that's leading to chronic health issues, autoimmune issues, uh, you know, ADHD, autism, whatever it may be. Um, and when you get those answers, then what happens is, you know, healing and recovery can start taking place. Yeah, I mean, especially for the ones that have done everything, right? I mean, I almost want, you know, to talk to them and say, hey, listen, have you done the genetics? Because I know you said you've done everything, but I know that's a part you're missing. And they say, no, I've done it. And I'm like, well, my doctor ran an MTHFR. And I told someone the other day, John, someone told me that they had an MTHFR and Factor Five Leiden test uh, run only and they said they had both of them and that's all they said and they said like see you later and I was like that's kind of like my buddy John's analogy but I'll take it <laughs> another level where it's like saying okay there's two major villains in the Harry Potter story see you later you know right. I mean it's like you know like okay not only did I make a conclusion on the first chapter I was told that there was two villains and I never was told how the story ended you know so right. um, you know especially with people that have been dealing with the problem for so long and they haven't, you know, even if they've gone through a Prometheus or a genetic genie, they haven't organized it in genetic types. And they yeah. haven't looked at it in terms of this is your genetic type. Um, and people love that. People love to know, well, not happy to know, like I, I have this problem, but if I can organize it and I can identify it as, as a real thing, and then I can, you know, have power in, you know, designing a customizable program for that specific type. And most importantly, I can see the needle move, then this is for me. So let's talk a little bit about our, you know, about how they can, you know, if they're watching a YouTube channel, your genetic type, I guess, tell them about, um, you know, where they can get access to this. 
Yeah, so um, here pretty quickly, uh, and, and maybe if you're watching this, you're going to be able to go to uh, yourgenetictype.com. And on there, like I said, first thing you can do is, is we have a mini course we put together that you, like I said, often give us your email address. And based on that, we've got a couple hours of content that you're going to be able to walk, you know, um, watch through and get a pretty good idea of what your genetic type is. And, and then that's the starting point. That's going to determine what rabbit hole, rabbit holes you got to go down. And then from there, we've got additional uh, resources that are out there that are available to really kind of learn based on once you determine your genetic type, what you need to do about it. What are the, the dietary, supplemental testing things that you really need to kind of hone in on to really get information. And so from a genetic standpoint, um, you know, there, there's resources that are gonna be on our website that if you don't have genetic tests, we're gonna be able to make that available to you all. Uh, if you do have something like 23Me or Ancestry, we'll have information on where to get um, templates to be able to run that data through your genetic type templates. That's gonna help really streamline this process for you to really determine, all right, I'm this genetic type and here are the genes that play into it how big of a problem are they okay and so those resources are all going to be on uh, your genetic type.com so um, be on the lookout if it's if you go to it today and it's not there it's coming very soon um, follow us on youtube uh, you know uh, follow us on facebook there's going to be updates of when everything's available and like i said it's going to give you a, a a different insight if this genetic stuff is new to you um, it's going to be a really great starting point because it's going to save you a lot of time and a lot of money of narrowing down all the fluff, all right, taking all the fluff out of the mix and really streamlining things. And if this genetic stuff is not something that's new to you and you work with somebody or you've been, you've been reading about MTHFR and other genetic components and there's still a lot of confusion um, in terms of what, what do you do, where do you start, uh, this genetic type concept is really going to streamline this down for everyone to really give them a, a, a really great starting point on where they should uh, begin and what are their next steps going forward. That's awesome. So good. I don't think there's anything else to say. Just make sure that if you're watching this in our Facebook uh, page, your genetic type, um, we can't answer your questions directly because we don't see them, but we will go back and answer whatever questions you guys have. Um, our YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe to that because we'll have content that's just um, just uh, origin or original for YouTube. And, uh, and we look forward, most importantly, to provide you guys with a lot of value. So that's all we got for today. John, any last words? No, that's it. I'm excited. Just everybody, like I said, follow us on social media. And uh, this is something that's going to be right around the corner. And um, like I said, some really great information that's going to be life changing. Yeah, so just to bring it a full circle, end the, the MTHFR madness by understanding that you have a genetic type, and then that way you can think outside the box, do the proper protocols that um, take in all of the gene variants and the lifestyle impact and the nutritional and dietary recommendations, and you may have or you may not have an MTHFR component, but you will definitely start to make your needle move in the right direction and, and end your, your, your exhaustion or your chronic problem. So looking forward till next time, John, yep. and I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Take care. Go. See everybody next time.